The number of hotel rooms in Africa is set to increase by almost 50 percent, with 207 hotels set to open their doors this year alone. Outlook is bullish, and by all indications, led by foreign investment. Nigeria's W Hospitality Group estimates that there are 59 international hotel brands on the continent, split evenly between Sub-Saharan and North Africa. One of the most important implications of hotel investment in Africa is job creation. The retail and hospitality sector accounted for nearly a fifth of all new wage paying jobs in Africa since 2002. That's according to McKinsey's Africa at Work report released in the second half of last year. So where does this leave South Africa? The country faces a unique set of challenges given the massive drive to expand the tourism sector leading up to the FIFA World Cup in 2010, coupled with a subsequent recession. Recovery remains cautious. Graham, thanks for your time. I want us first to look at what you did to add extra capacity in the run-up to the World Cup. And then secondly, I want to know just how bad the after-party headache has been since the World Cup. It's been three years, you must have recovered by now. Yeah, I think um, ourselves and other hotel groups and independent operators took advantage of the opportunity leading up to the World Cup to accelerate a lot of projects uh, so that new hotels and capacity was going to be available before the World Cup. But you must remember the decision to build additional properties and new hotels was fueled by the growth in demand uh, 2005, 6, yeah. 7 and 8. So it just has so happened that a lot of the development was accelerated prior to the World Cup. Right. Uh, post the World Cup, uh, there's no doubt that the effects of the global recession started to hit uh, locally. Mm -hmm. um, local GDP gro growth um, faltered and so you know, being a discretionary industry like the hotel business is, or the hospitality industry is, yeah. there was no doubt a, a softening in demand. And then the excess capacity, which we estimate somewhere between 25 to 30 percent, had to be mopped up by, uh, by less demand. Yeah. From your side, how much more did you add and how much do you remain with now that you're sitting that you'd like to, mm -hmm. to, to get uh, more bodies into? Well, we added six properties prior to uh, the start of the World Cup. Yeah. Um, we focused in secondary locations. We had a we opened uh, Southern Sun Hyde Park in, in Santon Rosebank area, uh, but most of our, pro our stock was in secondary locations. Um, <clears throat> and since then, we have been, uh, we've announced a couple of acquisitions uh, where we were able to um, acquire hotels that from uh, owners who didn't want to be in the hotel space anymore. Right. Um, because for us, it's not so much a capacity problem in, at this moment in time as more of a problem in a shortage of demand. Right. So, you know, the industry is only selling the same number of hotel rooms now, maybe slightly more now in 2013 uh, per night than we were in 2008. Right. So it's a question of more of uh, a growth in demand that's required as opposed to there being too much stock. Yeah, so you're growing again. Let's go to Arthur in Cape Town. Now, Arthur, you hear what Graham is saying in terms of uh, the extra capacity that was added and, of course, the pitch that came in after the World Cup and, of course, the effects of the 2008 financial crisis. How bad was it in the Protea Hotels group? <laughs> I don't know if it was bad. Uh, what happened was that we added about 10 properties as well during this time and, obviously, a lot of independents added properties as well. Graham's numbers are correct, but what he has left out of that discussion, which I would add, is that in addition to the fact that we're only selling the same number of rooms, there are too many people that have been in the business from about 2009 until today that should really never have been here. And so they don't understand that in order to maintain decent quality standards, yeah. one needs to charge a rate that is appropriate. And because exactly as Graham says about the lack of demand, um, or the increase of supply or whichever way you look at it, yeah. uh, the average room rates that are being charged are still sub-economic. We're not being able to get a return if we were to build these hotels today. And it's yeah. going to take a while to stabilize. Are you saying therefore that there's an opportunity for consolidation here? There's an opportunity exactly as Graham says for a number of people that should never have been in the hospitality industry to actually exit the, the uh, assets and hand them over to people who are prepared to take that risk and understand what the risk means. Yeah. So in terms of pulling the industry forward, how long will it take, do you think, before uh, there's equilibrium again, if you like? Uh, it depends on what you define as equilibrium because, you know, different hotel products or different grades of hotels right. uh, or quality of hotels have different break-even points and different mm. sensitivity points. 
Um, I think we need to acknowledge the fact that there has been some momentum that has shifted in the positive direction over the last 12 to 18 months. Yeah. Although I must say I'm a bit concerned uh, in the last uh, May and into June that um, we're starting to see a bit of a softening in demand again. Right. Um, but there has been s some momentum. But take yourselves back to 2008 where uh, market occupancies um, were sitting around the 68 to 72 percent mark. Yeah. Uh, we're only sitting at 57, 58 percent okay. in, in the, the market. So yeah. there's still room for growth. And as uh, Arthur rightly says, you know, if there's stock available and the power sits with the consumer in terms of choice of product and of quality, yeah. then price uh, is under pressure. Is so, that, so it's going to take some time. Is that a South African picture or is that also a Pan-African picture? Uh, no, the rest of Africa has a slightly different supply-demand uh, equilibrium. Mm -hmm. There hasn't been as much growth in stock in some of our neighboring markets and neighboring and the neighboring cities uh, in the rest of Africa as there has been in South Africa because right. of the, the potential that exists in South Africa leading up to the World Cup. Yeah. So the, the African markets and certain cities are still quite buoyant, but we are seeing a growth in supply in those markets too. So I think you're going to find yeah. that there's some markets are going to become increasingly intensified from a competitive perspective. Yeah. Now, Arthur, you are, of course, uh, quite strong in the South African market. With outside of South Africa, where, as many people say, it's a, a mature, sophisticated market, are you looking beyond South Africa, Southern Africa, into the rest of the continent? We have hotels in 10 African countries. We've been there for many years. And we think that uh, demand is going to slowly increase in those areas. You're saying slowly, uh, Arthur. Supply in some of them sporadically has increased. Uh, to give a simple example, yeah. if you take a secondary city somewhere in Nigeria, there may be one 100-room hotel. You build a second hotel in that city, and all of a sudden uh, there's chaos in the marketplace because the first hotel was only running at 60% or 70%. Yeah. Uh, on a fair market share projection, it means they're both running at 35%. Yeah. But we now have a situation that the rates have dropped by 20, 30, 40 percent in order to accommodate uh, people, the, the two hoteliers, the, in this fictitious, fictional, fi sorry, fictitious uh, example that I give you, um, where they are desperately trying to get market share back. Yeah. Arthur, I, I, I interjected earlier because I was asking, I was querying you on uh, your use of the word slow demand. That's not consistent with the picture that we're increasingly getting about the African continent. I think if you read the pages of the financial press, seven of the ten fastest economies growing in the world are in Africa. And everywhere in Africa there is indeed growth with exceptions of a few places. But you're saying on the hotel industry side that growth is much slower than uh, perhaps is being projected in the headline numbers on the economic front. Well, I think we need to differentiate between supply and demand. Yeah. So if demand is growing by, call it 9% compound per annum, that's a very, very good number in international terms. In most of the Western or mature markets, the demand is growing by zero. So 9% okay. is a wonderful number. Yeah. The problem is that the supply side is growing by 200% per annum because everybody who can scrape together 10 cents has decided that being in the hotel business seems like a pretty good investment. <laughs> So it doesn't take long in a capitalistic market for people to dive in. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but the market does have ups and downs. Yeah. And again, just to your previous point about how people are doing, those who've got uh, proper companies that are correctly capitalized and that have got historical costs on many of the assets are doing fine. Yeah. The problem lies with those people that have overgeared the product, have not put enough equity in, and frankly don't understand the investment that they've got into. Yeah. Graham, is that a picture that you see as well? Yeah, I think Arthur's uh, got it uh, quite accurate. I mean, and I think just one further thing I'd like to add about Africa, there are certain cities in Africa that are yeah. showing more buoyancy than others. And um, at the end of the day, uh, hotels are pretty much like any other as uh, property asset class. It's all about being in the right place, in the yeah. right location to make sure you take advantage of of those growth, that growth in demand. Are you looking to get into Africa? Yeah, we're, uh, we're already in Africa, like, uh, like Arthur has, has indicated to, in respect to Protea. We're in, uh, we've got uh, eight properties outside of Africa. We've got one property coming out of the ground in Abu Dhabi. Um, to give an example, we're expanding our Southern Southern Maputo Hotel by another 110 keys to take advantage of a, the, the, good, uh, the buoyancy that's in the Mozambican economy at this moment in time. Yeah. So Africa is definitely on our radar. Good to be, good time to be in business.